I have 23 things on my phone that I have not told you guys that I'm telling you in this video. Hey booze. So this is the first video I'm making on this channel in 2023. So I'm about to do my makeup. I'm about to get ready to film the podcast with Nikki. All I could think about was all the things in 2022 that I kept to myself that I never shared with you guys. Thanks to Genesis for sponsoring a portion of this video. First of all, it was such a crazy different year for me. I have never experienced a year like 2022 in my entire life. I can unarguably say 2022 was my favorite year of my life so far. But if I learned anything from 2022, it's that I'm very, very inspired and I feel like I can do anything. So I figured I'm going to tell you guys the 23 things that I never told you in 2022 in honor of 2023. So I actually wrote a list of things on my phone that I'm gonna read down. So I'm gonna walk you guys through January 2022 all the way up until December 2022 with facts per month. But I'm gonna start this video with a fact from December 2022 because it was just so amazing. I got to work with Genesis. Thanks to Genesis for sponsoring this portion of this video. Hey guys, I'm at Genesis headquarters and I'm going to be taken on a test drive. The key features of the Genesis GV80 is the striking design and all-road capability, including the comfort for all passengers and the advanced intuitive technology. My favorite part about the GV80 is the athletic exterior and the absolutely elegant white space interior. The Genesis GV80 has a bold and stylish low profile and wide stance design and a powerful cabin with sleek character lines that fade towards the rear. And I was really drawn to the G Matrix pattern on the grille on the front of the car. It's just so beautiful. And I learned that it's inspired by beautiful orchids seen when diamonds are illuminated by light. The interior is inspired by the roof of traditional Hanok houses, and I really appreciate how much thought went into this design. The interior really emulates feelings of openness and elegance with the beauty of the white space. And the horizontal layout really, really emphasizes the feeling of openness and space elegance, and the dynamic parabolic character lines accentuate the powerful cabin. And it includes intuitive safety features, which I will show you in the vlog portion of the test drive. Yes, I was taken on a test drive, but all the features are super thought out, including a cloud connected multimedia platform, active noise control, a 3D cluster, and five or seven passenger seating configurations. So I'm in the Genesis GV80 and there are some features that are my favorite that I'm going to tell you guys about right now. These beautiful quilted seats and I just learned that there's auto closing doors and I'm someone who always leaves like my door a crack and then I have to reshut my door even like while I'm driving. But look, if you go like this, it just finished closing it for me. I'm going to do it again so you guys can see. Yeah, I'm mind blown because ever since I've been driving, that's always been an issue of mine. I love the digital AC and the fact that I can adjust the temperature with the touch screen. The touch screen is very luxurious. It's very cute. The entire front of this car is super glamorous and there's rear window shades and there's a switch for it. I'm going to show you guys right now. I'm flicking this button right here. Taking a moment for how cute this wheel is. And look at the 3D cluster right here. Also, look how cute this siding is of the console. And then there's like this little cubby right here. Guys, look at this feature. So if you're having a bad day, I'm not going to play it for you for copyright reasons, but there's different sounds you could go through, like rainy day, experience the universe, like lively forest, on a sailing ship, city at dawn. They, they're really, really good, like meditating sounds and music. You could just be driving and stressed and you know, just put one of these on and you'd relax. So we are being taken on a test drive in the Genesis GV80. So far, so smooth. So right now I'm playing with the drive modes. As you can see, there's snow, there's eco, there's comfort, sport, custom. Ooh, custom. That is so cool. This makes parking so easy. Wow. You could get like a nice aerial shot. Such a unique car. Thanks to Genesis for sponsoring that part of my video. You can explore the Genesis GV80 down below in the description box. Now back to my regular content. I 
I remember vividly lots of comments in 2022 about how you guys don't feel as close to me anymore and one of my new year's resolutions actually is to get closer with you guys so i figured the best way to start 2023 is to tell you guys the things that i wanted to tell you at the time but just genuinely felt like i couldn't i was still kind of battling the fear of opening up online which 2022 somehow brought me back to life again i feel like me again and i feel like i can talk about what i want to talk about again so my year starts in january 2022 where i had really really conquered the art of manifestation and i didn't even realize the nikki and gabby video that we filmed as soon as i recovered from being sick um yeah i was sick the first week of january i literally did not even go to any near celebrations i felt like being sick in the beginning of the year really made me want to like hustle 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 as soon as i got better as soon as i started feeling better i started working really really hard and manifesting a lot basically this month we filmed a nikki and gabby video where it was a zoom competition it was sister versus sister rules to this challenge where nikki and i had to use the green screen feature on the software and try and fake backgrounds and pretend we were somewhere else and post them on instagram well i selected the eiffel tower as my background and by at this point i hadn't traveled in a while because of everything that was going on in the world so i remember saying like oh i'm just gonna green screen me and the eiffel tower because it's probably gonna be a while till i go to paris little did i know the next month i would see the eiffel tower in real life so that was like the month i'd say january 2022 was the month that i was manifesting so hard and i didn't even realize so guys trust me when i say this manifestation is so real and i feel like january is just such a powerful month so definitely take advantage of that not only was i manifesting subconsciously in january but i was also intentional manifestation i would take salt baths and light intention candles and play some like manifestation music on youtube and out loud say affirmations of things that i was going to be doing and little did i know i was going to be achieving all of those so you know i guess january was the month i really really believed in myself and i put work before everything before relationships before friendships before like literally anything and everything another fact about january is i discovered what a boundary is and i recognized how i want to be treated and it's insane when you recognize what a boundary is everything in your life changes and you realize wow i don't like how this person this person or this person treats me and how do i teach them what my boundaries are if i let them treat me with no boundaries for all these years it's really really hard to teach someone to respect your boundaries when you let them treat you a certain way for x amount of time so january was the month i realized i deserved better in many different ways i found relationships with people that really taught me this is how i want to be treated this is what i want in life and um yeah i guess i decided to put up boundaries i became a boundary boss and with that uh a lot of conflicts arose in my relationships with people you just can't turn an apple into an orange if if someone was disrespecting your boundaries for x amount of years and you finally discovered what a, what a boundary is and you put them up and they won't respect them then it is what it is january was the month that i discovered what my boundaries are i put them down put them in place and although it filtered out some people it brought some really really amazing people into my life and little did i know that these new people in my life would be very prominent figures in my 2022 so now we get into february february was a really really crazy month um sorry i keep looking down i just have my phone on my lap and i'm just reading off of my facts list so i'm going to be looking down a lot for february because there's like so much that happened in february on the first one is i have footage in one of my custom elope wedding dresses and I love the dress so much and I wanna wear it again, but I feel weird. Just decided I couldn't do it, got cold feet, but we still went ahead and took pictures and footage and videos anyway in case I changed my mind. Anyways, I love that dress so much, but I do have footage. It's really weird to talk about. Other fact is in February, I realized I'm pansexual. Then my personal life started becoming very, very beautiful and it started manifesting into everything that I ever wanted my personal life to be. And that was very unintentional because majority of my manifestations for 2022 had nothing to do with my personal life they all had to do with like work and it's crazy how when you have the right people in your life respecting you and just you know uplifting you it's crazy how that does bleed into work in a positive light it, it helps every aspect of your life so i felt like the universe was unintentionally 
uplifting my work life by making sure that my personal life was very respected and safe and secure. So yeah, that was one of those manifestations where I was like, whoa, this is a change that needed to be made in my life and I didn't realize that this is what was stunting me. Also in February, I was sitting in the glam chair at New York Fashion Week and I wrote the entire pitch in like 10 or 15 minutes for the Nikki and Gabby podcast. Um, I saw an email that was like not being responded to in like our team email and I was like, yo, wait, hold up. I was like, oh my goodness, why have we not been responding about writing a pitch? So I was just really, really passionate at the time and Val was doing my hair and I was like, I have all these ideas. I wanna get this out before I go to this event. And I wrote out an entire outline, literally like two or three pages and sent it while in the glam chair. Also in February leading into March, I lost a lot of friendships. My relationship was so like intermixed with like friendships that I feel like a lot of my relationships with friends kind of like dwindled. Nobody was direct or like said anything to me, but like I was hearing a lot of he said, she said and opinions and you know, I just, I felt like a lot of people didn't agree with the breakup. My relationship was very intermixed with a friend group. It definitely really affected the friend group, but I noticed after that breakup, there were so many one-sided relationships. And when I say that, I mean like, I would have to like reach out to friends to like check in and hang out. A lot of the friends that were in that friend group um, would only talk to me if I was reaching out to them. And I, I don't know if it was because I was traveling a lot more for work and wasn't just like sitting at home there and having a lot of hangouts like I used to. I don't know if it was that or because of the breakup, but I'll let, I'll say I, my intuition says a lot of the friends that kind of like fell off and just like stopped reaching out de definitely had their opinions led to a filtration system of relationships and friendships too. But with a lot of that loss came a lot of gain and new relationships and new connections and new friendships. So, and definitely bleeding into April and May, I was bitter and confused um, because then it was my birthday month in May and you know. Also in February in Paris, I re-recorded a song that I've been trying to release for like three years now. And I think we're sorting it out like finally for the new year. And I'm honestly kind of glad it's gonna be in the new year and not associated with like previous music because I'm kind of turning more into a real like club pop vibe for 2023. So now this brings us to March when I released Broken Morning. And I actually released the Broken Morning music video as like a breakup announcement because of the storyline in the music video had to do with everything. But I feel like nobody understood that. So then in April, when I was at Coachella, I was in Palm Springs in the influencer house sitting outside by the pool, I literally filmed a sit down breakup video slash announcement for my channel and I was too nervous and I never posted it. And therefore in May, there was like a lot of cheating rumors that I eventually cleared up in October. In April, I was at Coachella, I was in Palm Springs and I actually went to church for Easter in Palm Springs and it was really, really beautiful. I was like, I feel right, I feel aligned. I wanna go film this breakup announcement by the pool. And I took my camera after church, went outside by the pool, filmed the breakup video. And then when I was about to post it, I just got too much anxiety and I just didn't. Then I have for May that I changed a track on my album. It was an interlude called Love at First Sight and I changed it to 222 in Paris. Then I also have that my relationship with God got stronger because I started this thing where Whenever I just really, really needed a sign, I was kind of going through like a lot in May. I feel like everything was kind of just catching up with me before I went to Cannes um, mentally. And so in May and June, my relationship with God got a lot stronger because I started doing this thing where whenever I felt hopeless or nervous um, or just fearful, I would just say, God, I need you, show me a sign. And literally I would get signs. Like one time I was like, really, really looking for my passport. I wasn't going anywhere. I was just really, really fixed on finding my passport because I knew there were things that I was going to be doing in July and I just like really, really needed my passport. At that, in that moment, I was freaked out. So I was just really, really upset. I was looking for the passport and I was like, God, please show me a sign. I literally looked to my left and I kid you not, like this place that I looked, this the shopping bag that I looked in, it was sitting right there. And I was like, that definitely wasn't there before. So I felt like my relationship with God definitely got, re I know that's like a really weird story, but my relationship with God got really, really strong. And I started feeling like his presence whenever I was getting fearful. That definitely played a huge part for me in May and June. I also have in May that I booked my Cannes Film Festival ticket two or three days before my first event without even knowing if I was invited or not. <laughs> In June, I wrote my song Heaven, which is unreleased, that I am going to be releasing this year. This is a really sad fact. I don't... I've never lost a grandma in my entire life. 
And I'm really, really fortunate to say that. So as you guys know, in like June, if you guys watched my vlog channel, I was doing a lot of like rehearsals for my London show. I had moved into a sublet with my friend Hannah. This is before I got my own place in LA last month. So I was subletting with my friend and doing rehearsals for London. I was working really, really hard for London, but I honestly didn't even know if I was going to continue to do the London show because like a week leading up to my flight to go to London, uh, I found out that my abuela wasn't doing well and well, I'm really really fortunate to say I've never lost a grandma in my life And you know, I was getting really nervous I kept checking in with my relatives every day leading up to my flight and I didn't know what to do or what decision to make so on the way to the airport um, On the way to London I stopped and I said farewell to my abuela after London I started dealing with a lot a tree fell on my house in August and a lot of stuff was just going on in my personal life. In August, I had to finally face my living situation and I stayed put in Pennsylvania for a little bit to resolve that and to try and make home a little more comfortable again. That's when I started all my renovations and the tree fell on my house and that definitely took a toll on my stress levels. So that bled into me staying home again for September. I actually was gonna try and go to fall fashion week in Paris, but I didn't, I just stayed put. So in September, I actually toured a lot of houses. I wasn't sure if I was gonna stay here. I tend to run away instead of facing things. And then I made the decision at the end of the month that I was just gonna stay put here and just continue to turn this place into a beautiful pink cottage palace. In September, I also decided to push finalizing new music until I figured out what I was doing with my home. So up until I decided I was just gonna stay here, I did. I kind of took a pause on like music and I'm not gonna stop doing music. That wasn't the plan, but it's okay to take breaks here and there. And I definitely learned that. And that leads me to October when I made the decision to get my second home in LA. I loved living with Hannah and everyone was like, what happened? It was literally just the fact that I wanted my own space. Hannah's still one of my friends. October is when I made the decision to get my own place. I actually went to LA very last minute for Halloween and that's when I made that decision. And I toured places, fell in love, and then I moved in in December. And that leads me to the cliffhanger of this video. And I'm just gonna say it and I'll elaborate in another YouTube video, but I got a third nose job the first week of living in my own place in LA. And it's still swollen and I'm still recovering, but I'm gonna elaborate more about that in my next video. I have footage and everything. I just, first of all, wanna thank you guys so much for riding with me this year and staying by my side through one of the craziest changing transitional years of my entire life. I just hope you guys know I've always had every intention of being open with you guys and honest and keeping our relationship very close, but I hope you can understand how hard it's been to try and be vulnerable in a really in a really transitional year because I want to protect my peace and my relationships and I want to protect the people I love and I want to protect my pretty little mind and my health. With that being said, here's to 2023 being more open, honest, and vulnerable. Here's to new music spilling a lot of the tea. And yeah, I love you guys. And uh, one of my New Year's resolutions is to put more Bible passages in my vlogs. I started doing that a lot when I was doing my home vlogs in 2022. And I feel like my vlogs just kind of lost that. And that's something that made me really, really happy. And I know you guys enjoyed it too. So I'm gonna be doing that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If any other YouTuber who's watching this wants to copy this trend, go ahead. I feel like a lot of YouTubers are in the same boat when it comes to like sharing personal information. So if you wanna do 23 facts from 2022 that you didn't share, by all means, uh, I love you guys so much and I'm really happy I made this video. I feel like bricks are off my back and I hope that cleared up a few things. But I'll see you guys in my next fancy vlog. I love you and yeah.